it is unfair it is unfair and people say yeah life is unfair but fuck it this shit is unfair I had so much trouble putting on the stuck on my head today. I probably tried it 20 times, but you know what? It's going to have to do. It's going to have to work. But I want you guys to see my t-shirt. Look at it, guys. Look at it. Look at it. So it has this black queen over here looking so gorgeous. And it has this statement. It says, black don't crack under racism, under oppression, under inequality. What? Really? Ah, oh, what a statement. What a bold statement. Every time I wear it, I'm like, watch me. Look at me. I'm a black queen, baby. <laughs> but yeah, it gives good energy for the topic that we're going to be delving into today. what's up everybody welcome back to my channel to your channel to our channel and thank you so much for tuning into our video today if you're new here welcome 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 and thank you so much for joining us today do consider subscribing and being a part of our community so without any further delay let's get right into the video shall we so today guys we'll be speaking about a very sensitive topic i need to put that disclaimer every time i discuss sensitive topics because you need to know that this topic might be a trigger for you and i want you to have that liberty i want you to have the freedom to choose that you know what i'm going to step out of this video or you know what i actually want to listen to what the school has to say so we'll be speaking about murder crime violence um and if those topics are a bit for you it's okay step out and suss out the vibe on our channel and see other things maybe those things won't really trigger you and you will actually enjoy them as most of you have now discovered flavor's girlfriend has been released out of prison um on parole she spent seven years in prison for a 12-year sentence and she's back she's back she's ready to be in reintegrated into society and become a fully functional citizen again yay so flabber was a hip-hop slash rap artist in south africa and was a part of squatter cap which was a hip-hop slash rap group um, that began in the 2000s so it was a big group and that's where we know of flabber so a couple of years ago flabber lost his life all thanks to his girlfriend and i'm being sarcastic because this <laughs> the story really blows my mind because we really don't know what went down. We really don't know what was going on. You know, we we know nothing. So the girlfriend um, is now out and did the most by going to Mac G. Mac G's podcast, which is one of the biggest media outlets in South Africa today, and spoke about the matter. Spoke about the matter in a very nonchalant, jokingly sarcastic manner. Uh, <laughs> me, I'm like mean to do something like that when i was analyzing the situation a couple of things popped up and i will be discussing those things with you um however this this situation is very it's very it's very upsetting it's very heartbreaking because to me when when the correctional services or the justice system can approve your probation to me that says you have been fully rehabilitated as a person you are now ready to reintegrate into society this the justice system strongly believes and agrees that you know what this person is ready to be a part of other human beings again he or she is ready to be a part of other human beings to be a part of his or her community again and we trust that this person will never whatsoever commit this crime again and most importantly that this person is remorseful however to be honest to you guys i did not see that in that in 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 in, in that interview that's that's the snippet of the interview i did not see that i saw someone who was disrespectful dishonoring the person that um she committed a crime on um disrespecting the family of the person that she took away 
there was no regard for that person's human life whatsoever and to me that person is not fully re rehabilitated because someone who is rehabilitated the most important thing that they should present to society is remorse and that is not what i saw do you know what the situation makes me feel or what the situation makes me think how we are so withdrawn as a society we are so removed we are doing a great job at desensitizing sensitive issues for the mere fact that this lady could come out of prison sure fine she, she was given a 12 year sentence okay cool um but i am the of the argument that if you take a life at least spend 20 years in prison fam like honestly seven years really does that really is that really enough for someone to be fully rehabilitated but as call up so for me it, it it just bamboozles me how as a society someone could commit a crime like that and come out and speak about it in the manner in which she spoke about it and even capitalize on that crime by having a documentary like we it's it says to me that as a society we're saying it's okay oh you did great you did absolutely great continue doing what you're doing we're saying as a society it's okay you can commit a crime and capitalize on it you 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 can commit a crime and joke about it and laugh about it my goodness when i saw that clip i was like i was thinking about the family i was thinking about everyone who was impacted by flabber's death i was thinking about if he has kids what are those kids thinking about like it felt like she was spitting on his grave when her interview and how she was promoting her documentary how she was doing it in that manner it, it just gives me bad vibes for the documentary that's going to be published or, or launched or you know created about this particular crime it just gives me bad vibes it's like ah oh you're not even gonna get the full truth here in the same way that we're not getting the full truth about the Senza Meiwa case. Like, I feel like it's going to bring that same energy, that same vibe, that same aura. It really makes me scared when, when, we, can, we, when we can promote such cruelty, when we can promote such behavior as a society. It makes me scared to, 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 to bring people into this world. That's why I am so doubtful to bring kids into this world. Because I'm like, my kids are going to be affected by this. My kids are going to be exposed to this. My kids are going to be traumatized by this shit. Honestly, as a society, we are losing our moral code. It's, 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 it's falling apart each and every day. But the second thing I want to also address is how, as a society, we, we have so many excuses for women. We can, we can list a thousand excuses for women when women commit a crime. But we don't, we don't share the same energy or the same sympathy or empathy when it comes to a man. We don't. Trust me, we don't. Guys, this is GBV at its best. This is gender-based violence at its best. Gender-based violence is not woman-based violence. If it was, then it was going to be called woman-based violence. Gender-based violence is violence, crime, targeted at a specific gender. In this regard, the gender is male. Men. We have so many reasons when it comes to women committing a crime. Oh, it was... It was this, it was that. It was self-defense. But the moment a man commits a crime to a woman, there's no regard for self-defense. Where's that regard for self-defense then? A man can shout self-defense a million times, but then society is going to be like, what? You're a man. You're stronger than this woman. It doesn't make sense. And then we ask ourselves, and then we cry, and then we question ourselves, why men are the way they are? Why some men can be so withdrawn, detached, emotionless, cannot express their feelings and commit 
crimes on women? We ask ourselves so many of those questions. And then we are able to promote such behavior. This scenario, this situation is a piece to the big whole. It contributes to the narrative. It contributes to the discourse that we have about men. We should be sharing the same empathy and same em the same empathy and the same sympathy when it comes to men. And we're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're spitting on their graves. We're spitting on their faces. That's what we're doing as a society. And it breaks my heart. It is unfair. It is unfair. And people say, yeah, oh, life is unfair, but fuck it, this shit is unfair. And I know maybe some of you are very confused as to the argument that I'm having today. I'm a feminist. Yes, probably so. I could wear a t-shirt saying I'm a feminist. I am, truly. But my kind of feminism is like this. Men, women, my kind of feminism aims to do this. It never wants to do this. That's my kind of feminism. And I think that's where we should end this video because it's a lot fam. It's a lot. That's where we're going to end today's video. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'll close this video today by saying that my heart bleeds for Flabber's family. It really does. It really, really does. Because this is a huge trigger for them. Because you can never fully grieve from losing someone that you love. And honestly, I, I really hope that they could be comforted by the fact that Flabber lived his life a certain way. He touched certain people. That legacy will always live on. Also, to, to our Krishna services, to our justice system. You guys need to do more, man. You need to do better. Honestly, you're failing us as a society. You're failing our families. You're failing, you're failing us all. Please try to do better. We have come to the end of this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you don't miss any new videos. If you enjoyed any parts to this video, do comment those parts down below. If you watched the MACG interview, do tell me what you thought about it. I'd really like to know. Until next time. Bye, guys.